I know I said I wouldn't do any more East Front system tutorials from GNT Games, but uh, it kind of dawned on me that I hadn't really covered flotillas. And here's Flotilla Kiev. Um, there was several flotillas in World War II. There's Dnieper, um, Kiev, Volga. There's a bunch of them. Uh, if you want, I can put some history up on my blog, maybe about some of these. Uh, the major thing about these units in the Eastern Front system, they have the 16 blue naval movement um, and they go along rivers and sea hex sides. Uh, so they're not, the movement isn't too odd for them. There is a pretty good uh, example. If you're looking at the Crimea rule book, page 16, um, you can see where they can enter certain sea hexes and basically it's kind of along the coast Some things like this And then they can go up major rivers and things like that so they can kind of hit this and go up the river the important thing to remember is uh, They can also hit the full sea hexes like that and along these coasts the important there's a couple of important things to remember when they move up uh, major rivers like this one that we're looking at here. Oh, excuse me one second here. I'm going to adjust my tripod. Uh, you do have to pick a, a hex side, and crossing over does cost movement. So you want to advance up and down the road. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, the river. Like so. And then if you want to cross over, that, that'll cost you a movement point. Uh, they basically just, it costs one flotilla movement point, which is the blue. It's kind of like a term that they have. And you kind of just pick your way up and can cross over, etc. You're not allowed to jump rivers, though. You have to see it through to the end of the river and kind of cross that way. You can't jump, you know, you can't go like this and jump rivers over to this. So I just have a little thing set up here. Uh, there's some Romanian uh, cavalry here. Something different today. Uh, in the town of Bereslav, and they're being approached by some Soviet infantry. And let me just make sure I got the right... I have all my books crazy all over the place. Uh, make sure I got the right thing here. Yeah. Now, there's a Soviet infantry brigade right outside the city, and the flotilla could actually move up and participate in combat, um, which is kind of a weird thing. You know, it's not too often you see that happen. Uh, and a, one of the things is when they're moving, they do have to, they can't enter enemy occupied hexes and they do have to cease movement on entering uh, an enemy zone of control. So, for example, he could sneak right up there and participate in the attack. Uh, if you want to even make it clear, we could put him uh, here, for example, uh, and then have him stop here. So it doesn't, you know, look as weird, a little bit more in the open. And so he could literally just go one, two, three, four, five, or just uh, one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that. And then we can always make him stop right here and participate in the attack. Uh, the, let's see, what other strange things do they have? Um... Unlike major rivers, canal hexes only occupy one hex side. Uh, and what they're talking about is how major rivers occupy two hex sides here. Canal hex sides only occupy one. So you only see them on this one. So 
they can't move cross bank on canals. So they can't cross over on canals. Um, and on the movement terrain chart, it's river canal hexide. That's what they call it. So just don't get confused by that. Um, they can move from hex to hex containing the, the canal symbol at one flotilla MP, just like the other thing. And anytime that, um, say there's snow weather in effect, say uh, the weather turns to snow, they have to stop moving. Um, if something turns into Arctic, they're done for the entire game for the rest of the scenario. So they can like literally get iced in. So if it turns to Arctic, that's it. Uh, snow, they just have to stop moving. And then when it thaws out again, they can start moving once more and do their thing there. So um, remember they do have to, st when they move down these smaller ones, just make sure you're, you're picking your side and you cannot cross over. Here you can cross over. Uh, that's the way I read it. That's 11.25. It's a little bit confusing. Um, but that's, I mean, just reading through the rule book, I can read it to you. But that's that's pretty much uh, the way I kind of picked up on that. At first, I was a little bit confused about the writing in that 11.25. Um, now, combat. The combat rules for flotillas are near the back of the book. you got to go all the way to the specialized units, and you're looking at page 35 in the Crimea book, and I think it's the same page in the Kiev to Rostov book. Um, so they can move up to 16 hexes in both friendly movement and motorized movement phase, the flotillas. So they really book quickly. Um, they don't move during the reaction movement phase, and they are not tied into an HQ system. They move along connected canal, major river, coastal, or sea hexes, and the axis uh, powers can air interdict a river hex uh, in an air interdiction mission, which if you go back to some of my previous videos, I cover air power, but you can interdict, interdict a hex and it will interdict the hexes around it and then hit the river and actually prevent river movement. Um, they also block enemy supply lines going through the hex it occupies, but they cannot transport ground units. And they do suffer all combat or overrun results. They can also be overrun by motorized units on the same side of a major river. So if the Germans had a motorized unit here and they were moving this way, they could actually come in and overrun the flotilla. Um, they normally participate in combat. They cannot attack during a storm. Uh, if a storm weather occurs, you pick up the flotilla on a sea or coastal hex. So if it was out here um, and a storm occurs, right? You actually have to pick it up and place it at the nearest friendly port within its movement allowance. So you would have to literally go like in port or in port. Right up there. So that actually kind of kind of grounds them uh, in, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I, I kind of like that rule. So you, you, the weather in this game is very important in case you haven't noticed yet. This game really functions around weather and what it does to the map, which is kind of cool. Uh, flotillas on rivers are not repositioned. Um, all flotillas receive a do not move one game turn marker at the end of the weather determination phase in either case uh, when you get a storm like that. When they attack and defend alone, they don't receive artillery support. Uh, they can retreat to an all sea hex. No retreat is possible after the first snow or arctic weather. Any flotilla forced to retreat is placed in the eliminated box. If they defend alone in a fortification, they don't receive the fortification die roll modifier. Axis flotillas have anti-air capability. I didn't punch one of those out in this example. Um, so basically, what we would have here is... The flotilla moving up, having to stop in an enemy zone of control, and then the combat could commence. And that's really about it. So you would have here a 3-2 to two combat going on. 
um, not the most powerful unit. I, I mean, I to me, I've looked at some of the pictures and it's kind of hard to figure out what this is representing because uh, the you know the Wehrmacht had like these weird skiff, these raft skiff things, and then the Russians had like full blown like attack boats and smaller attack boats. So I'm not really sure what they're going for here, but it is a weak as hell unit. So um, not the most you know, punctual type thing. It's got a zero stacking rate. The red R, I believe that means it cannot be rebuilt, I think. Um, I actually have to look that up. I can't remember what that means. I think it means it can't be rebuilt and it might be in our handy dandy how to read the units thing here. Uh, that's a good question, actually. I know someone would probably ask me that. Uh, yeah. I believe the red R means it cannot be rebuilt because I noticed that when you lose it, it goes to the eliminated box, not the cadre box. So if uh, I'm not mistaken, that's what that means. I do remember seeing it somewhere uh, in this mess of uh, rules here, but it escapes me now. Let's see if I can find that. I found it. It's unit uh, not replaceable. That's what the red R stands for. So unit not replaceable. Right there, that little R. So that's really about it for flotillas. They got that cool C rule where you'd have to you know, displace them. And they do block enemy supply lines through that hex. They can be overrun. Um, I'd be kind of curious, though, to see how this combat works out. So we may actually go ahead and do this and see how this works out. Um, if you want, kids, let's follow along and try this out. Uh, it's a little opening video there for a couple of my viewers who are giving me shit about unclipped counters. I hope you're happy. Okay, can we move on now? All right. Yeah, I'm curious to see how this ends out because the odds are not that great. These are not the greatest combat units. It's almost like they got a pea shooter on there. But Romanian Cavalry, yeah, who knows? We'll see what happens. You notice this has got a three stacking limit, uh, which is extremely high. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. The 8th Romanian Cavalry Brigade, I believe that is. Yeah, I'd be curious to see how this combat turns out, actually. I find that very fascinating. Sometimes you just throw units on here and see how it goes, but then you kind of want to see how this ends up. Uh, I think you could go poorly either way, to be honest with you. Um, remember, combat in this game, there's a few conditions that have to be met. Uh, you can read those on page 20. There's condition 1 and condition 2. Enemy units in the hex must project a ZOC into adjacent friendly occupied hexes. So um, the cavalry does project as EOC. So uh, he's eligible for attack. And then condition two is you have to be able to move into or enter the hex if you want to attack it. So yeah, that's perfectly fine right there. Um, just keep in mind very carefully that you watch your, your uh, zone of control projections and things like that. And remember that every, when you attack, when you declare an attack, everyone has to be accounted for. So uh, if there's another enemy unit here, someone would have to take care of this attack. You have to account for that attack also. So just a heads up on that. Uh, all right. So remember that the first thing you're going to do is you have a reaction and things like that in combat. And then we can kind of go through that and show you how, how you organize it. And then there's a determining attack supply and stuff like that. Um, the attacker declares where it will be supplied and designates the supply dump or the uh, transport truck. Uh, at least one uh, attack supply point must be expended to place an attack in attack supply. All right, so let me get my summary for combat and then we'll kind of go over that. Also, if you want a really good summary of some of the movement things and what happens, you can, um, the player aid card number two, up here, see number two, uh, has some good abbreviation or some good uh, summaries here 
uh, telling you movement is allowed, yes, no, and then the what what it entails across here. So you can always consult this and see if there's anything special. And of course, you've got the general summary up here of who can do what flotilla movement phase full full not available. So um, the chart this chart helps a lot, kind of sums things up. And actually, they do kind of expect you to use it because. Um, they don't really tell you that, but it, it can get confusing if you don't. Let me just adjust my zoom here. All right. Um, so there's a few steps we're going to skip in combat, you know, defender reaction and stuff like that. Um, and there's no air, there's no close air support or anything like that. Uh, during that reaction movement phase in combat, if you remember, you can always, you know, the, the defender can move eligible motorized units within three hexes up to half their movement allowance. Um, now, one interesting thing is the defender can issue no retreat or additional retreat orders to the defender hexes that are the object of a declared attack. An order placed on the hex applies to all hexes. Of a multiple hex combat applies to all hexes. Place the chosen order marker face down. I'm wondering if I want to do... Now, the Russians require an HQ to place those orders, but I'm wondering what would happen if I say... Uh, he say that you know Romania. Well, they probably wouldn't listen, but let's let's just see what. Uh, I have a feeling he's going to be wiped out, but we'll try it. Let's place in secret an order next to that. I'm going to act like I don't know what's happening, uh, just for the heck of it, just to see what happens. All right, so there's no close air support. Organize it. Um, participating units are friendly non-artillery. Each attacking unit must be in the ZOC of an enemy unit. Yep. Uh, and then pretty much all you do is combine the defense strength of all the units in defender's hex and do a single total. The defender cannot withhold a unit that's under attack. And we determine attack supply. I kind of forgot to put that on there. We're going to say that uh, the Soviet player is in attack supply. And actually, one of the things I'm wondering is, do flotillas need to be in attack supply? I should have probably read that. I didn't see anything about a flotilla having to do that. That could be interesting, huh? I don't think that they count for that, though. Let's see. Yeah, they don't say anything about having to be in combat supply. I'm going to assume that they don't need it. That's kind of interesting. They never did bring that up. Unless it might be in the supply rules and I missed it. Yeah, for this, we'll just assume that everyone's in attack supply. We'll just kind of go with it. Um, I also have a video up for that uh, from a couple of years ago, if you want to look at it. That would be interesting, though, if that was not true. Eh. All right. Uh, so once you get all that finished in combat, and we don't have too much going on in this, in this specialized combat, so um, it's going to be pretty easy. Normally, the attacker would... Uh, Allocate artillery support, but there isn't any here and then the defender would do that and you want to check for the terrain modifiers um, If you attack across a major river hex side and things like that, there's going to be modifiers This is in the open. I moved him out of the city put him here in the open I just want to see uh, if he gets trash. We'll assume that the weather is clear and that there's no special modifiers there uh, We determine the odds now. What are we at here? I kind of forgot let me just, yeah, we're at three to two. So our odds come out to be uh, 1.5, and you always, uh, you always round off in favor of the defender. So it's going to be a one-on-one, one-to-one -one attack. Uh, 1.5, some games you round up, some games you round down. This one, it's always down. So it's one-to-one uh, -one on the CRT. Uh, the attacker re issues retreat orders. No, we're not doing that. Any retreat order on the defender hex is now turned to its retreat option size, and we decided to do no retreat. That's the order that these Romanian, that the Romanian cavalry is under. They're having to take uh, orders from a German commander. You cannot retreat out of that hex, he says. So we'll try that and see what happens. All right, uh, let me get my handy combat chart here. There's not too much that's going to affect this uh, combat. There's no combined arms or anything like that. Um, 
We'll take a look at it. Combat effects beneficial to the attacker. Combined arms? Nope. I'm just looking right off the table here. Um, Panzer Division Integrity? Nope. Defender has an overrun? Nope. Defender Supply? Uh, we're going to say the Romanians are in supply. Is there an engineer included? Nah, don't need it. Artillery support? Nope. Super heavy? Nope. All right, let's look at things beneficial to the defender. Uh, terrain, strong points, and fortified lines. See the terrain effects chart. We're in clear, uh, so there's nothing going on here. Um, don't have to worry about attack supply. All right, defender, no retreat order. Plus one. So this plus one is a plus one die roll modifier. Of course, if this fails, they're going to take some extra losses and things will not turn out so well. Uh, there's no close air support and there's no artillery support. So basically we're just rolling uh, straight one-to-one. -one, uh, there's plus one to the die roll. So let's just, uh, I'm curious to see what happens here, just, out of, just for the heck of it. And this also allows me to use my impressive dice tower here. Let's just grab these out. Which color shall we go with today? I don't know. These are the things that war gamers have to worry about. I say blue. You know how hard it is to do this? My cat got me there. How hard it is to do this like through the camera lens? Okay. All right, let's take a look here. We're on one to one. We have a plus one die roll. I'm curious to see what happens here. This ought to be very interesting. Now, if you read uh, the no retreat is a plus one DRM, and then they show you that it's 2212C and 2242. Uh, I don't remember all the bad things that happen here. And we'll find out. All right, let's see what happens. A two. So you add plus one, that's a three. And let's slowly go back this way. There's my wonderful light. Let's see what one to one and a three is. That is a two slash one. Attacker result two, defender result one. The affected force of units loses that number of steps. Well, that's not very good. Uh, okay. That's just a bad roll, that's what that is. So it looks like uh, we have to lose two steps. And the defender loses a step. Wow, that's that's horrible. Do we want lower in this game? I can't remember. Mm, we do. We want lower, but that's just ass. That's just because the odds aren't that good. Oh, might have a problem here, folks. I think the Romanians. Well, they're they're the Romanians. They they do have to lose a step, but I think. Oh, <laughs> you're not going to tell me they actually hold on here. I think they do, folks. That is interesting. Okay. Wow. That's very interesting. All right. Um, hmm. So uh, that's it did not come out well for the attacker. I guess the odds were super bad. Um, yeah, we got the two to one. That's the attacker result. Interesting. No, I didn't... Uh, I didn't expect that to happen. Okay, that's uh, something you don't see too often, a Romanian unit actually winning a combat. Uh, all right. Well, let's read up how to remove the steps if I think he's gonna be eliminated. All right, uh, if desired, the attacker, yeah, we already did that. Let's take a look at the results. The affected force loses one to four steps as indicated. There's no retreat. Um, when a loss of combat strength, the owner removes an indicated number of combat strength levels from the total force, not from each unit. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, a unit takes losses in steps. Yep, we know that already. All right, just an add-on to the video real quick. Uh, kind of like an edit. I did find some flotilla information in the Crimea specific uh, game rules and they kind of contradict themselves here um, about the movement. 
does not match what's in the rule book because the rule book mentions Canal River. And this one does mentions major coastal and sea. So I'm not sure about that. If anyone can clear that up for me, I'm just trying to figure out if they can move on these. Um, because then the movement chart says that that's Canal River. Canal River hex side. So I don't know if anyone can clear that up. And then right here, uh, flotilla units may also be removed from play normally to satisfy step losses if they participate in amphibious assaults or combat. So, and they also do not require attack supply. So that's cleared up in this. We got that part right. I'm just still not clear on this river. Here it says one thing, then and you know, and then in the book here it says canal hexes. Canals only occupy one hex side. They cannot move. So I don't know. It's a little bit. I think I did that right. If not, let me know. I know we got some uh, EFS experts out there. Just kind of clear that up. All right. Thanks again. Yeah, that's brutal. Okay. So basically the uh, the no retreat rule. Um, they would have, if they had to retreat, they would have taken an extra step loss. So I have to remove one step. I have to remove one step here and here. So I don't, <laughs> I've had, never actually seen that happen before. So I think I, I did that right. I actually checked that's uh, interesting because that did not turn out too well. Um, and remember, when the when the boats are taken out, uh, they go to the eliminated box. Uh, infantry is, that's I think that goes to the cadre. I think the infantry can be rebuilt, may go to the cadre box. I can't remember. I have to look through it. Um, so that's interesting. And when you take step losses... Um, the owner removes the indicated number of combat strength levels from the total force, not from each unit in that force. Uh, so that was pretty interesting. Okay. I, I did not expect that to happen. So anyway, um, all right, that's flotillas. And that's flotillas uh, providing a great example of how not to use them in combat. That was just a really bad odds. I probably should not have done that. But uh, now you know. Uh, so a little bit of a declared attack and a no retreat. Um, so you take a risk, you get that plus one to the die roll, and you take a risk of losing an extra step if you get a retreat. But uh, that that two was quite possibly the one of the worst things I could have rolled. Uh, one to one in this game is is uh, pretty bad. Now that I look at the chart, um, you can you can see where this does. Uh, well, it kind of goes, it's kind of weird because the defender's on the bottom. So there's a 2R, a 1R, and then it just starts to get really bad for the attacker. There's very few, little leeway here for the attacker to really get a pot. You've got to really roll well, and I did not. And I, I We just got smack dab right here. So I blame that on my die rolling. Um, so there you go, Romanian uh, uh, Super Cavalry Unit. All right, excellent. Okay, the next thing I'm probably going to do is a playthrough video of this game. Um, I did score a copy of Typhoon. It was not cheap, but uh, if you're going to get these games, remember Army Group North, South, and Center is P500, so don't spend an extravagant fortune on those eBay hoarders on those titles. Just wait for the P500. It's in art and production now, um, but Typhoon... Kiev to Rostov, uh, Crimea, those are ones that are not being redone. So those you can shoot for. And Crimea is fairly uh, fairly well available due to its complexity. Um, and it has the neighbor rules and the latest rule book. So. All right, well, that was interesting. Uh, I'll get this video up and then let me know what you think about that crazy combat result. And I'm going to make sure I did that right because I've never had a combat in this game like that where things just got blown off the table like that. So, uh, But I had to lose two steps. That was weird. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, hit that subscribe, like button, and I appreciate all the comments I've been getting lately, except for that one guy, that weird hex to hex guy who keeps talking about my gun clip counters. Uh, all right, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks. Thanks.